Uh, to Vanson Group CIO David Vanson. We've got uh, Jenny, Chief uh, Investment Strategist Mark Lashini. Uh, Mark, any with you, begin with you. This is all about trade, isn't it? The less it looks like we're going to see these sides talking, the more problematic it is. The better, not so much. Agreed. Uh, the market is being held hostage to trade negotiations and Sino-American relations. And uh, you see the schizophrenic behavior by way of trade discussion or talks on, trade talks off, influencing the market on an intraday basis, let alone what it's doing on a day-over-day or week-over-week basis. And it's likely going to continue until we get some crystallization around where this ultimately is going to land, because we have $200 billion of tariffs out there that some percentage is going to be applied to, 0 to 25 five percent, perhaps, with the threat of another 267 billion to follow. So that's going to weigh on market participants' sentiment about whether to go long equities or not. Um, David, does this play into your market forecast? I mean, I know the prevailing wisdom has always been, you know, we, we worry about trade wars and all of this. They haven't really come to pass. I'm not ignoring the fact that, you know, uh, agricultural commodities have been feeling it. We, we, we see big effects in, in the steel, aluminum products. But by and large, uh, it, it hasn't been felt. And I'm wondering whether that's what the markets are going on, that the cooler heads will prevail. There's no question that's what the markets have been going on. It pivoted at some point in early July. And I think the expectation is that there will be some resolution. There will be some uh, posturing and negotiation along the way, and they'll get it done in the end. So when you ask, is it factoring into how we're allocating capital, the answer is yes. Now, for one thing, if I had a crystal ball, Neil, and I knew that we were going to go to this full-blown trade war, like the worst aspect of all of it, Smoot, Holly, China lets it go, we let it go, right. NAFTA's blown up, then we would obviously bring down our equity exposure dramatically. Where we are now, though, and because I believe that basic thesis, that this is a totally unnecessary, unproductive distraction, but ultimately the, the cudlows of the administration will win out over the Navarros, that's our belief, what we have to expect now is enhanced volatility. And we have to expect that there's going to be some compression of what would otherwise be a healthier market multiple. So the benefits of tax reform, $83 billion of added money in the economy from corporate tax rates being lower and $500 billion from repatriation are now coming lower because of this trade issue, but not coming so low that it makes us bearish. You know, Mark, there might be something to that, because if you just take the read of consumers and companies responding to consumers, Look at Apple pushing what on the high end could be a more than $1,400 phone. So that's not the posture you take if you're worried about consumers retrenching. What do you make of that? I agree with that view as well, Neil. I mean, the fact is we have been and continue to be very bullish on the state of the consumer. They're in great financial conditions uh, that is helping to persuade spending behavior. Sentiment is elevated. Household net worths at all-time highs. Balance sheets are in good order. And income statements are improving by way of wage gains. And so you can see it in the sentiment surveys from the small business community, which is at all-time highs as well. And so this is feeding into a spending cycle with both the consumer and business contributing that I think is supporting the kind of spending behavior that is going to be helpful for products like Apple's new iPhone suite, which is uh, getting exceedingly pricing, but yet pricey, but at the same time, probably not pricing itself out of the marketplace. Um, David, how closely do you look at individual investors? I mean, um, despite the market run up, very few as a percentage of overall Americans are in this market. I think it's the general rule of thumb people use about 55 percent. I don't know if that's accurate. But the, the bullish argument, well, more can come in. In other words, there's a lot more cash potential out there. Where are you on this? I, I mean, that's not that aspect. Uh, more people coming in the market, new investors, is not of particular interest to us. The valuation of investments that whatever that investing population is going for matters. The attractiveness of asset classes matters. So when there are people who are invested and they have significant amounts of cash, that cash is eligible to come into equities or fixed income, which is the case now, by the way. There's still an incredible overinvestment in fixed income, particularly taxable fixed income. And so that, that represents a supply-demand argument. There could be more demand for equities. But that isn't going to make prices higher sustainably. Profit growth 
always and forever drives markets. There are tradable factors along the way, but ultimately we're contrarians that think that the bulk of people are getting it wrong in, in the masses and that through time value wins out. And we truly believe there's value to be found in the market right now. That's the way we're positioning client portfolios, Neil. If he's right, Mark, that would seem to indicate some continued traction in this bull market because it is an obscenely rich. It's richer than it was, but it's not off the charts. What do you say? Indeed. I think the market is not overpriced. I think it's fairly valued, which obviously means that it's vulnerable to hiccups now and again. And we're experiencing more volatility this year than we've seen over the last 12 to 18 months. But, you know, that's natural. The fact of the matter is the macroeconomic underpinnings for the economy, number one, and within that, the fertile climate for corporate profits, I think, are supportive of equity prices. So our view as it stands today is that this bull market is going to last for another 12 to 18 months, at least as clairvoyant we can be at the moment which suggests that on balance, equity should perform better than bonds and cash and therefore continue to flatter client investment portfolios. Well, that would be like a, a dozen year long bull market. Well, it doesn't necessarily have to die in old age. It'll die oh, in the right. next recession more likely than not. And we don't foresee that in the foreseeable future. All right, guys, thank you both very, very much.